This is a century egg. It's basically been pickled, I don't know in what, for a long, long time. And in, like the white of the egg gets brown, and the yolk, as you can see, gets this kind of ring effect. I've heard of these, and I watched a video on them once, but I've never gotten a chance to try one. So, here's to the next century. Not bad. Not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Tastes like mushroom at the yes. end. At the end. <laughs> Not bad in the beginning. No, the beginning was fine. Ugh. By the way, hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday. So we just went downstairs and had some breakfast. Um, it was it was good. The egg was... Uh, I actually tried the egg also. And um, it tasted basically like a like a normal egg until the very, very end. Um, now we're, uh, we're going to be getting on the bus and uh, cruising around Xi'an today. Um, we won't be here tomorrow. We'll be going to Beijing. So today is very strictly... Uh, she am. We're going to be seeing the Terracotta Army because that's like the tourist thing to do, but we also have some other stops uh, planned as well, and apparently a lot of walking. Uh, and you can actually see, we have a pretty good view up here because we're the, uh, we're the 16th floor. It's just, you know, a little hazy. <laughs> it just went from blue to white. Good job, camera. Good job.
So we started our day at a park, um, I think it was Shang Shang Park, and it was just a chance to give us um, some experience with the local people of Xi'an. And it was really cool because uh, there's so many of these people that they get up in the morning and they go do exercises for hours or practice instruments and getting a chance to see all of that was uh, really interesting. Um, we basically just got to mingle and as you saw, a lot of people got to dance. Mal, you got to do a little dancing. Um, a little bit. <laughs> Some people were more enthusiastic than others. Um, after that, we, uh, we came over to, uh, we're, we're gonna be seeing the Terracotta, uh, Terracotta Army today, which is kind of like the big thing in Xi'an. So we came over to a place where they still do like terracotta work. Uh, so we actually get a chance to um, see some of the, the people working, um, how it's made. Obviously they're not working on the stuff we're going to see in the museum because that was the originals. These are just like replicas. But it's still really fascinating to see exactly how, how it's done. Um, in addition, there's uh, an entire section on furniture creation, um, kind of in the old Chinese style. And the handiwork is just impeccable. I mean, it, it simply can't be matched. But there's uh, there's a lot of interesting things to to see. There's a lot of uh, a lot of beautiful work being done here. And I think as soon as we leave, we're probably going to be heading over to uh, the actual. Wait, what? Oh, we're doing lunch first. I like lunch. Our lunch. I I hope you still remember your choice. Uh, either spaghetti or chicken rice. Oh. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. That's very pretty. For lunch, they've arranged for us to have uh, a, a big group meal at a... It's a, it's a university, but also a hotel. And apparently up until recently, it was just for like high-ranking officials and things have started to change where now a tour group can have lunch here. I'm just kind of drawing on all of the stuff that I'm trying to remember, but um, the food's pretty good. And it's kind of weird to have like spaghetti in China, but sure, why not? So we're at the site of the Terracotta Warriors in Xi'an, and this is the original site where they were discovered by a farmer in 1974. He was digging a water well, and it's actually like they haven't marked where it is. And they just kept excavating, and the archaeologists came, and they know there's more of these here, but they realize that there's pigment in them, and the oxidation of the pigment to the air was making the color go away. So they kind of stopped, and they know there's more here. There's more buildings of just these terracotta warriors that go on forever. And there's just a ton of them. The space is massive. So here you can see kind of the first part, and then back there further, they kind of started to figure out how to stop the oxidation process. And behind that, they said there's kind of like a hospital where they're doing some restoration work. But there's just an incredible amount of them here in this space. One of the other things that's real cool that we didn't mention is that uh, the farmer who discovered, um, you know, the the beginning of the the Terracotta Army that started all this thing, um, he actually became a huge celebrity and lived here, which was his house anyway. The government set him up here, and people would come to visit, and he would sign autographs, and he actually did that for like 
over 20 years. In fact, he just stopped doing it in the last few years because the dude's like 87 years old. But I think that's pretty cool too. The government actually made him uh, a lifetime curator. So, that's pretty neat. Like his entire life changed. He was from a, a very like small, poor village. He was a farmer. He was a farmer, he was illiterate. Our guide um, said that when he found, he first found a head because the heads are removable. Yeah. He thought it was like an evil spirit and that he might have cursed his village. Yeah. So it, it was, it was interesting because like we wouldn't have any of this, you know, if it weren't for that one discovery. Yeah. And they're still working on, uh, you know, finding more. So the area we were just in was pit one, um, but there are actually more pits discovered. So uh, we've moved over into pit two, and uh, one of the things that we we didn't mention is that all of the, the statues in that first section, um, they were found in pieces. None of them were found completed. So it's actually kind of become the world's biggest and most frustrating puzzle to actually reassemble all of those terracotta army figures. Um, it also makes it far cooler when you go back and watch the, the, the clips from before. Um, more than likely they were found like this. So you can see there's broken up pieces here in the second pit that have not yet been reassembled. That being said, um, in the midst of these hundreds of figures that were found, there was actually one that was found intact. And uh, it was a kneeling archer. And they have it behind uh, a display glass over there. It's just kind of astounding that, you know, amongst all of this rubble, there was one, you know, figure that made it unscathed. And uh, it's just really cool that they managed to get it out without having any damage. So we're back to the hotel after a pretty long and successful day of uh, cruising around Xi'an. Um, the Terracotta Army was uh, really interesting. Um, not only was it, you know, gigantic um, to look at, but there's so much more beneath the surface. And the tour guide explained that to us, but it was still fascinating to Mallory and myself. So when we came back to the hotel, Mallory continued to dig into information about it and apparently um, they used some like underground radar stuff to figure out exactly how much more stuff is under the the dirt and it, uh, there's like 38 square miles like with where the mausoleum is yeah and then all of this part and then there's like some other areas where they found like acrobat terracotta figures and stuff mm -hmm. so. so it's it's not just the figures but like there's emperor tombs and they found so many like how many bronze items like a ton of stuff so it's um it's wild it's wild and i mean this is i, I assume the uh the single largest archaeological find in history um just to, to randomly stumble across this and then for it to just go on and on and on. And now, you know, 30 years later, 40 years later, you know, they're still finding stuff and they still know that there's more down there. Um, our tour guides were, were talking about Xi'an and how it's just part of the news and no one gets excited for it anymore because they're always discovering stuff. They said it's just like once a week. They're like, oh, and, you know, we discovered this Well, digging the subway tunnel. Or... And this, you know, and this. So it's... It's just wild. It's it's now become commonplace here because there's so much left to see under underground. It's just really neat, you know. Um, obviously, there's been really cool archaeological finds in history, and um, you know, Mao was using the example of like uh, Egypt, where yeah, there's cool stuff in the pyramids, but we also know that they're there. The 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 huge contrast between that and this is that a farmer randomly discovered this and it turned out to be the biggest thing ever. 
So it's just really cool. You know, and it's it'd be interesting to return to see this in like 50 years because it will have probably changed even more. And like the actual mausoleum has never been opened. Oh yeah. Like they don't think it's ever been opened. Oh. Because um well back then they think the guy that raided all the stuff like didn't get that far. Okay. But since like it got forgotten about and then um they're worried to open it now just based on Oh yeah. How the pigments on the terracotta warriors have flaked in seconds after uncovering them. Yeah, Mao was Mao was reading about that because we mentioned earlier how those those figures were painted and apparently it takes 15 seconds and the colored lacquer that's on them peels off when exposed to oxygen. So when they first started the dig, they were just trying to get to the figures and then they stopped because they were like, "Wait, we need to figure out a way to keep the color on these things." So that's what they're working on next. Yeah. So a few hours later, and we're at the end of the evening, and um, for dinner, uh, we wanted to go out with Mark and Rhonda and find some dumplings. Um, the Chinese word for which is bao, or at least the, the type of dumplings we were after. And uh, we'd asked the concierge about where we might get some of those. And, um, well, the directions that we followed led us into a alley um, with all sorts of, of shops, um, and uh, we didn't find any dumplings. Well, that's not true. Eventually, we did stumble across a woman who had some dumplings, and it, it wasn't like a, a restaurant. It was just a woman that had dumplings and was selling dumplings, and Mao went up and asked how much they were, and we were really having a hard time communicating, and Mao handed her four coins for Yuan, and we got this back. It's a sack of multiple because once once Mao handed over the money, the the woman just started putting them into a bag and like we we wanted like two and there were I don't know how many we got ultimately like eight and we were like thank you and then we we started to walk off and when Mao bit into them, she quickly realized that there was nothing. In them, there's essentially dinner rolls. Um, so we gave we gave up and went back to the hotel. <laughs> so we ordered something in the hotel. I actually had a hamburger, um, which is uh, the first hamburger I, I think I've had here, and uh, it was pretty good. There was two fried eggs on it, which was um, a lot of of egg, but it's still very good. Mao had a, a sandwich. Um, Mark and Rhonda actually had the. There's a buffet here, um, and uh, it, a lot of the buffet is very. Asian Chinese uh, cuisine, um, and uh, I thought honestly I would probably eat better with just having a hamburger for for tonight. Anyway, say all that to now uh, wrap up the vlog um, very quickly because our stuff has to be outside the door by 10 p.m., which is in like less than 90 minutes um, because it's all getting taken to the airport because we have a flight early in the morning to go to Beijing, and we have a full day planned tomorrow as well. So. I'm going to end this vlog here, and tomorrow we... Are you behind the curtain? <laughs> tomorrow we'll proceed to Beijing and uh, have a good time. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?